everybody. It's Miss Teresa from the New Deal Creative Arts Center. Welcome you back to Stories at 7. I'm excited to be here to read for you again. Today marks three weeks since we launched Stories at 7, and I can't believe how the time has flown by, but we have had so many great stories and so many wonderful readers with more on the way. So make sure you tune in. Some were welcoming back, some were welcoming for the first time. So you're in for night after night of wonderful stories. And we thank you for watching too. We really appreciate you taking part in this. Uh, so tonight I am reading The Song and Dance Man by Karen Ackerman. And I chose this book because this very book I'm holding is mine. It's been mine since I was a little girl. I look back and it's from 1988. Uh, and it's a wonderful story that I just remember reading over and over again, either to myself or my parents would read it to me. And I also used to love the illustrations um, in the book and also the ones I can imagine in my head while my parents read it to me. I chose this book um, for another reason, and that is because in my acting class, we're learning about the um, history of musical theater, and we recently talked about vaudeville, which made me think of this book, so I thought it was a good time that, to read it, so I'm excited to share Song and Dance Man with you, written by Karen Ackerman. Grandpa was a song and dance man who once danced on the vaudeville stage. When we visit, he tells us about a time before people watched TV, back in the good old days, the song and dance days. Supper in an hour, Grandma calls from the kitchen. I wonder if my tap shoes still fit, Grandpa says with a smile. Then he turns on the light to the attic and we follow him up the steep wooden steps. Faded posters of Grandpa when he was young hang on the walls. He moves some cardboard boxes and a rack of Grandma's winter dresses out of the way, and we see a dusty brown leather trim trunk in the corner. As soon as Grandpa opens it, the smell of cedar chips and old things saved fills the attic. Inside are his shoes with the silver half moon taps on the toes and heels bowler hats and top hats, and vests with stripes and matching bow ties. We try on the hats and pretend we're dancing on a vaudeville stage where the bright lights twinkle and the piano player nods his head along with the music. After wiping his shoes with a cloth he calls a chamois, Grandpa puts them on. He tucks small white pads inside the shoes so his corns won't rub, and he turns on the lamps and aims each one down like a spotlight. He sprinkles a little powder on the floor, and it's showtime. We sit on one of Grandma's woolen blankets, clap our hands, and call out, Yay, Grandpa! The song and dance man begins to dance the old soft shoe. His feet move slowly at first while his tap shoes make soft, slippery sounds like rain on a tin roof. We forget that it's Grandpa dancing and all we can hear is the silvery taps of two feet and all we can see is a song and dance man gliding across the vaudeville stage. Hey, watch this, he says and he does a new step that sounds like a woodpecker tapping on a tree. Suddenly, his shoes move faster and he begins to sing. His voice is as round and strong as a canyon echo, and his cheeks get rosy as he sings Yankee Doodle Boy, a song he knows from the good old days. There are too many dance steps and too many words in the song for us to remember, but the show is better than any show on TV. The song and dance man stops and leans forward with a wink. What's that in your ear, he says, and he pulls a silver dollar out of somebody's hair. He rolls his bowler hat down his arm and catches it in his hand and flips it back onto his head. Know how to make an elephant float, he asks. One scoop of ice cream, two squirts of soda, and three scoops of elephant. 
We've heard that joke before, but the song and dance man slaps his knee and laughs till his eyes water. He tries to wipe them with a red hanky from his vest pocket, but the hanky just gets longer and longer as he pulls it out. He looks so surprised that we start laughing too, and it feels like the whole attic is shaking. Sometimes we laugh so hard the hiccups start, and Grandpa stops to bring us a glass of water from the bathroom. Drink slow and hold your breath, he says, or I'll have to scare you. Once our hiccups are gone, he gets a gold-tipped cane and a black silk top hat from the trunk. He lowers his eyes and tips the hat, and he's standing very still. All the lights are turned low except one that shines on his polished tap shoes. It's the grand finale, so the song and dance man takes a deep breath. He lifts the cane and holds it in both hands. Slowly, he starts to tap. His shoes move faster and faster, and the sound coming from them are too many for to make with only two feet. He spins and jumps into the air. Touching the stage again, he kneels with his arms spread out, and the silk top hat and the gold-tipped cane lie side by side at his feet. His shoes are still, and the show is over. We stand up together and clap our hands, shouting, hooray, and more. But Grandpa only smiles and shakes his head all out of breath. He takes off his tap shoes, wraps them gently in the chamois cloth, and puts them back in the leather-trimmed trunk. He carefully folds his vest and lays the top hat and cane on it, and we follow him to the stairway. Grandpa holds the rail as we go down the steps. At the bottom, he hugs us and we tell him we wish we could have seen him dance in the good old days, the song and dance days. He smiles and whispers that he wouldn't trade a million good old days for the days he spends with us. But as he turns off the attic light, Grandpa glances back up the stairs and we wonder how much he really misses that time on the vaudeville stage when he was a song and dance man. The end. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you enjoyed that story. It is one of my favorites. Tune in again tomorrow for another all new stories at seven with the New Deal Creative Arts Center. Good night.